There is no mountain higher than Swirl Mountain. No valley too low, no ocean too deep. No climb is met with more adversity than the steep climb of Swirl Mountain. Most that attempt to climb are doomed to fail. Surviving Bottom Shelf Brad, Case 13. NFL lineman Chad Wheeler arrested for nearly beating his black girlfriend to death. The Seattle Times is reporting that Seahawks Chad Wheeler was arrested on suspicion of felony domestic violence charges. The Seahawks player was being held in King County Jail on Monday night after being arrested on suspicion of felony domestic violence, accused of assaulting his black girlfriend at a residence in Kent, Washington. On Monday, Wheeler appeared in King County District Court and bail was set at $400,000. He was ordered not to have contact with the alleged victim and to, to surrender all his weapons. Court records show Wheeler was booked into the King County Correctional Facility in Seattle at 1.19 a.m. on Saturday. The Seattle Times says that Wheeler, a backup offensive lineman, joined the Seahawks in October 2019 and played in five games for them this season. He is a restricted free agent. In a statement Monday night, the Seahawks said that they were aware of the situation and still gathering information about the potential domestic violence charges. The Seattle Times generally does not name suspects until charged, but there are some exceptions, you know, including when a public figure is involved. The Times generally does not identify victims of domestic violence. A Kent Police Department report said police responded to a call of a woman who was locked in a bathroom following a physical fight with her boyfriend. The victim had called 911 to state that she was being killed. Police were advised that she had suffered a dislocated arm and was bleeding. According to the report, when officers arrived, they could hear screaming from inside the, of the apartment and after forcing their way in, they heard more screaming from a, a bathroom. They forced their way into the bathroom and found the victim in Wheeler. He was standing beside her, the report said. Wheeler initially was uncooperative before being detained. The report said, and he did not speak to officers. The alleged victim was transported to Valley Medical Center in Kent, Washington because of arm pain, the report said. Chad Wheeler is six feet seven and 310 pounds, and the victim is five nine and 145 pounds. According to the report from the Seattle Times, Wheeler had been on medication for bipolar disorder, but had not taken it of late. The report said the incident began when Wheeler asked the victim to bow to him, and when she did not, he grabbed her and threw her on a bed. The report said Wheeler then strangled the victim before she lost consciousness. The report also said when the alleged victim regained consciousness, Wheeler was standing near the bed and said, wow, 
you're alive? The victim then ran into the bathroom where she called 911 and family, according to the report. Wheeler picked the lock on the door and entered before officers arrived. It wasn't clear Monday night if Wheeler has a lawyer or not. Wheeler played in 65 offensive snaps and 22 on special teams for Seattle this season. He filled in at right tackle in games against the Giants and Jets in December due to injuries to other players. Wheeler played in 27 games with 19 starts for the Giants from 2017 to 2019, including 14 starts for the Giants in 2018. The Seahawks signed Wheeler in October 2019 after he was waived by the Giants. He is a restricted free agent, and if he does not receive a qualifying offer, he will become an unrestricted free agent when the NFL's new league year begins March 17th. Wheeler was a four-year starter at left tackle at USC from 2013 to 2016. He was an All-Pac-12 selection as a senior and a second-team All-Pac-12 as a junior. The alleged abuser went undrafted out of USC with a 2017 story in the New York Daily News reporting there were questions about Wheeler's past, including a December 2015 altercation with police. As detailed by the Daily News, Wheeler was not arrested but reportedly threatened a teammate, punched the walls and windows of an apartment, got into an altercation with police, and then was taken to an L.A. hospital for a psychiatric evaluation. An NBC News report alleged Wheeler was possibly under the influence of drugs or alcohol and did not recognize a fellow offensive lineman, so he threatened him. That prompted his outburst, a call to police, and then officers firing beanbag rounds at a fleeing Wheeler to subdue him, according to the report. As detailed by the Daily News, Wheeler cited personal issues and apologized. In a statement released in March 2016, he says, I regret what I did. I apologize to my coach, my teammates, and fans. I did have personal issues at the time. With Chad Wheeler being accused of this brutal beating where a black woman's arm was dislocated and she was bleeding, face swollen, and taken to the hospital, one does have to wonder where is Me Too and Toronto Burke when you need them? Oh, let's not forget what she said back last year. Why is it my job to go after white men? It becomes clear that Me Too, Toronto Burke, and Time's Up have little to offer to the victims of these violent outbursts by white men. So we have to look to the swirl concubines who continue to enrich themselves off the dangerous and anti-black rhetoric that they sell to these vulnerable black women. Skip Bayless, ESPN, Fox Sports, Jason Whitlock, Roger Goodell, Stephen A. Smith, and all the other high paid talking heads in sports are eerily, eerily silent in this matter of a 6'7", 310-pound offensive lineman being accused and alleged to have beaten his 5'9", black girlfriend. The world is watching, watching the hypocrisy to see if Chad Wheeler is found guilty of brutally beating his black girlfriend. But in the interim, will Team Divest and the Swirl Concubines and their Me Too overlords speak on this? Or will they remain silent and continue to enrich themselves? Don't hold your breath because Chad Wheeler is white. <laughs>